on this almost bright and sunny November morning. It may be getting colder outside, but the welcome is always warm and inviting here. And part of that welcome includes the bells ringing outside, so thank you for that, Sue. Uh, I can hear them in the distance, and it's a lovely reminder of calling people to church. That's what the bells do on Sunday morning. And the other part of that warm welcome is the music that Deb plays for us at the beginning. This is not her time to practice for the rest of the service. This is a gift that she gives to us to open. It's like, it's like um, the eyebrows or the uh, brackets around the service. She starts our worship service by providing this lovely music that sets a tone for the day. So thank you for that. She also finishes our service with a postlude. And that's our opportunity to sit, sigh, breathe in God and breathe out yet again the troubles of the day, the worries of the day, and to just be for another minute or two in God's presence before we go back out into the world. And that's another gift that you give us. So thank you for that. Part of that warmth also comes from our commitment to others through outreach and support of mission and service and through honoring the land. Good morning. I wish to acknowledge this land on which we are gathered today for this worship service. For thousands of years, this land has been and continues to be the traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. It is unceded and unsurrendered. The countless generations of Algonquin Anishinaabe have had, sorry, start again. For countless generations, the Algonquin Anishinaabe have had a unique, respectful, and sacred, um, have had sacred ties to this land that has sustained them. They have been not the owners, they were the stewards and are the stewards of this land. Let us learn from their example so that we can live with respect in creation. Thank you, Joan. And what a very good reminder, the word stewards of the land. It's a reminder from those who came before us that that's what we are. We are stewards of this land. We do not own it. We are just borrowing it from generations to come. And it's our responsibility to care for it. The flowers on the communion table this morning are from Alan Boothroyd's celebration of life yesterday. They mark that we have lost another of our saints and we will continue to hold his family in our prayers in the weeks and months ahead. Sharon, Jeff, and Sherry ask me to pass along their thanks for the visits, the food, the calls, and the prayers that surrounded Alan in these last few months. They were very moved by your support. We also thank Joan and Patty and John today for coming and leading us in worship and and music, and yes, we get to sing, and that's a wonderful thing. Speaking of singing, there's still time to sign up for Deb's Sing Along starting this Thursday at 10 o'clock. It's a great opportunity to come and have some social time and have fun singing. We will be able to safely distance, I imagine you're going to sing out there. Would you like to invite them yourself? Yes, please come, enjoy sharing music with us. No experience necessary. And I often hear, well, I am not a very good singer. Like the, the quote, if only the best birds sang in the forest, the forest would be silent. If you enjoy singing and want to come and enjoy some community, please do. 10 o'clock on Thursday. Thank you. One last reminder, the Haven is looking for sewing machines, so if you can help with that, please contact Diane Carden or you can call us in the office. In the shadows of life, in our darkest moments, Jesus proclaims himself our guiding light. No matter where we are or what our circumstances, wherever we find ourselves, Jesus is with us. We light this candle to remind us of the light that never goes out.
Please join with me for the call to worship. To pray is to open our hearts. To pray is to open our minds and our souls. To whom do we pray? Take us, God. Where will you take us, God? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Let's con continue with words of confession and assurance of pardon. I'm hurting. Sorry. I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. Where can we go for help? Where can we go for guidance? Where can we go to know that we are loving and lovable? Where can we go when we seek forgiveness for words of anger and actions that wound? We go into God's love, hurting our hold, and our God's Hurting our hold? Thanks be to God. Fill a Bucket by Cara McLeod and Catherine Martin. The day you were born was a very happy day. It was your birthday, a day you celebrate every year. 
You were a new person and a special gift. You received a very you you received a gift too. Your very own name. A very special as you. What is your name? Everyone was so happy to see you, but there was one part of you that they could not see. It was your bucket, your invisible bucket. Everyone is born with an invisible bucket. No one can see your bucket, but it is always with you. Your bucket is very important part of you. It always, it is an important part of everyone. Your bucket holds all the love and happiness that you receive each day. When your bucket is full, you feel happy. When your bucket is empty, you feel sad. It is good to have a full bucket. Every day your family and lots of other people help fill your bucket. When your daddy kisses and tickles you, he fills your bucket. Your giggles fill his bucket too. When your mommy smiles and tells you she loves you, she is filling your bucket. Your smiles fill her bucket too. When your sister or brother snuggles and reads to you, your bucket, fi your bucket fills up even more. When your grandpa or grandma plays with you, everyone's bucket is filled. Look, your bucket is so full. It is full of happy thoughts and lots of love. So many people have filled your buckets. You can fill their buckets too. Filling, filling a bucket or bucket filling is like magic. When you fill a bucket by being kind and loving, your bucket fills up too. You can do ma many things to fill every your buckets every day. When you listen and help, you are filling a bucket. Your bucket fills up even more. When you say please and thank you, your magic words fill buckets. When you play and share your toys, everyone is happy. Everyone's bucket is an invisible bucket but everyone's bucket is filled, is full. When you take care of your pet, you are filling a bucket. You are filling, you're filling a bucket. Your bucket fills up too. When you smile and wave, you are being a bucket filler. When you give hugs and kisses, your buck your love buckets fill. It's good to go to sleep with a bucket full of happiness and love. Look, look at the happy faces. Everyone's bucket is full. Now it's your turn. What will you do to fill a bucket? Deep in our hearts, there is a 
10, verses 11 to 14, and 19 to 25. Every priest goes to work at the altar each day, offers the same old sacrifices year in, year out, and never makes a dent in the sin problem. As a priest, Christ made a single sacrifice for sins, and that was it. Then he sat down right beside God and waited for his enemies to cave in. It was a perfect sacrifice by a perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people. By that single offering, he did everything that needed to be done for everyone who takes part in the purifying process. The Holy Spirit confirms this. This new plan I'm making with Israel isn't going to be written on paper, isn't going to be chiseled in stone. This time, I'm writing out the plan in them, carving it on the linings of their hearts. He concludes, I'll forever wipe the slate clean of their sins. Once sins are taken care of for good, there's no longer any need to offer sacrifices for them. So friends, we can now, without hesitation, walk right up to God, into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way, by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. This time, I'm writing out the plan in them, carving it on the linings of their hearts. He concludes, I'll forever wipe the slate clean of their sins. Once sins are taken care of for good, there's no longer any need to offer sacrifices for them. So friends, we can now, without hesitation, walk right up to God, into the holy place. Jesus has cleared the way, by the blood of his sacrifice, acting as our priest before God. So let's do it, full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. May the Lord bless this reading of his word. I think one of the nicest for me, the most meaningful parts of worship is sitting and listening to scripture being well read. Thank you, Barbara. That was beautiful. The final line, and, and we all know that there are many different translations to the Bible and words that, that are shifted and changed. And I always find it, uh, it gives me a bit of a pause when I have picked up on a word from my translation and the translation that read doesn't have that word in it. Barbara said spurring on, and in my translation it says provoking. And that's the, the topic of my reflection this morning. I can remember many times in my younger years when my mother referred to me as a provoking child. Now, I knew in the moment that she meant, meant that I was annoying her, and apparently I was an annoying child. But as I look back on it, I also know that it was her way of telling me that I was bringing out an emotion in her that she was uncomfortable with. As I look at the scripture lesson this morning, this word provoking leapt out at me and sent me off to my thesaurus. When provoking is used as an adjective, adjective, it is described as serving or likely to arouse a strong reaction with synonyms like inciting, instigating, stimulating, and words related to it like explosive, triggering, inspiring, activating, and motivating. When used as a verb, provoking is described as to rouse a strong feeling or action, again with synonyms like impassioning, sparking, stirring, and words related to it like fanning, energizing, triggering. In our Hebrew passage this morning, is this command to all Christians then and now, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, to encourage one another. It doesn't say to think about love and imagine good deeds, but to incite, to activate ourselves and others, to do good in the world and to motivate one another to love. This is what we are called to do and be as church. I grew up in the United Church. 
From a small child, I spent every Sunday morning in church, first at Sunday school, and then at worship with my parents afterward. I went to Explorers and CGIT and High C Youth Group. I worked beside my mother at UCW functions, and I served on a search committee at 16 to call our new minister, unheard of in the 60s to have youth represented in this way. I had a good experience at church. I was surrounded by people who loved me, who liked me, listened to me, who encouraged me, and made a space for me in the church. That church in Kemphill is the one that I go back to when I have moments of retirement. Now, this is a nice story. Warm feelings towards the church of my childhood. And I am sure many of you have similar stories. I am also sure that the youth and children of Bantic United will have similar stories to tell in their futures. But is that all church is? Is it just to be a comfortable place, a warm and loving place, a, a family, a village, a soft place to land in times of trouble, a cheering section in times of celebration? I believe the church is called to be more. I believe it is to be a provoking place. I believe that the church is called to take risks, to speak out against injustice, to stand up to bullies, to call people on their bad behavior, to work to help make the future better for everyone. As Christians, we are followers of Jesus, followers of the way. There are many ways to God. Marcus Ford talks about God, or in his word, the more, as being a large ball with lots of windows to look inside to see and understand what God is for us. Jesus is the window we look through. We see God through the teachings of parables, stories, life and death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. Jesus did not stand on the sidelines. Jesus did not take the easy way out. Jesus knew his time was limited and he gathered people around him to help him spread the good news. He gathered a rather motley crew People from the margins, people from everyday jobs and everyday lives, men and women who were willing to take risks. And Jesus taught them about the kingdom of God and what that might look like. He was provoking. Who has provoked you? And what did that provoking wake in you, stir in you to do and be in the world? We get encouraged by one another's kindness, courage, and generosity. We get stirred to action by another's indignation and righteous anger and injustice. We march, we write letters, we sign or instigate petitions. We use our voice and our influence to bring about change. But we can also fall silent because we feel our voice won't be heard or that our concerns won't be important enough. The book that was read for you this morning was about filling our buckets, and it is part of the curriculum for children in elementary school. The idea that each of us has a bucket that holds our self-esteem is a powerful one. This tool is used to help children see that by using positive statements with one another, they add to someone's bucket and help them feel better. But the part that this book was written for younger ages, and there's one that's written for grade four and up, and in it, it goes on and elaborates more about what happens when we don't use kind words. By saying or doing negative things, we empty another's bucket, and we leave them feeling small and insignificant. Our words are important. This was to help provoke change and to help children recognize the hurt and damage that bullying can be and can do. To help them realize that by being kind to one another, they were pumping each other up, they were filling each other's bucket. By those unkind words, those, those times when they were negative to one another, were hurtful and could empty a bucket just as easily. When I was writing curriculum for church school in my past ministry, I have included this book 
and have been amazed at what the kids had to say as they progressed through shared projects to fill one another's buckets. It became something each time that the whole church seemed to take on. The children provoked a kinder, gentler way of treating others inside the church, but also outside as well. So this morning, on behalf of the children of Manitoba United, I want to provoke you to go into the world this week and fill the buckets of the people you meet in everyday life. The store clerk, the gas station attendant, the teller at the bank, the cashier at Tim Hortons, the waitress at the restaurant, the young person who delivers your paper, the guy who lives next door that really annoyed you last week. Find something kind and generous to say. Point out something special that you see in them. Even a heartfelt smile and good morning can alter someone's day, maybe even their life. Sometimes we fill buckets with words and sometimes we do it with actions. So this week, when you get cut off in traffic, send that other driver positive thoughts about how you wish their day improves instead of the comments that way too readily come to mind. When you're driving behind that extremely slow driver or that tractor and wagon, use the time to enjoy the extra moments of the journey rather than feeling impatient. Sometimes by emptying someone else's bucket, we deplete our own as well. These may seem like small things, but many small drops can quickly fill a bucket. Maybe that drop that you added will be just the one to provoke change in someone who has been viewing the world in a negative way. Maybe that drop will be the one to break open someone's hurting heart. Maybe your drop will be the one that tips over someone else's bucket and lets love and change spill out over so many others in need. We don't know what changes our actions make in others' lives, but we can be sure that the more positive change comes from love than from hate or from indifference. More things that need to be changed are changed by positive actions rather than good intentions. As a church, our mission, our calling is to be provoking, to provoke one another to love and good deeds to fill buckets and to live lives that show those we meet what our faith is asking of us. Yesterday's service for Alan had me thinking about, some, about what someone might say one day about me in a similar end of life celebration. And I find myself hoping that they say what my mom did all those years ago, that I was indeed provoking. This morning I'm going to ask you to pray a little differently. The prayers of the people this morning are going to be by the people, you. We're going to share a murmuring prayer. I will pray and then invite you to softly murmur things that you are thankful for. We often feel uncomfortable shouting out our prayer requests, but it's important to say those things that we celebrate or that lay heavy on our hearts out loud. Deb will play softly and when she does, and while she does, I invite you to repeat things that you were thankful for in a murmur, in a soft, low voice behind your mask. When Deb stops, I will offer a prayer of intercession and again invite you to murmur your prayers to the world and people in need. When the music stops, we will close our prayer together with Amen. Let us pray. People of God, as we come to pray, we, let us remember that we do not have to twist the arm of a reluctant God to seek good things for this world, nor to find ways to persuade a distant God to come near and to listen to us. Let us remember that we kneel alongside Jesus in the presence of God, and with the help of the Spirit, murmur our prayers of thanksgiving.
followers of the way. Let us bring to mind now those people who are in need, those who are in our hearts and minds today as we murmur our prayers of intercession. In the presence of God, alongside Jesus the Christ, with the help of the Spirit, may we live out these prayers in the coming week. Amen. Let us pray together the words Jesus used to teach his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.